YouTube Visual Gaming Network and welcome to episode 20 of our Mario game in Java tutorial. Last episode we implemented a mushroom into our game. This episode we're going to be adding the first enemy which is a uh, Goomba. So before we start the episode I'm going to go to our entity package. We're gonna right click and go to new package. I'm gonna create another sub package to entity and we're gonna put dot mob on the end. And if you don't know what a mob is it's pretty much well, yeah, I guess it's an animal or a living thing that isn't a plant, an animal, yeah. Alright, so because our player is pretty much a living animal, because Mario is a human, right? And yeah, just move our player into our mob package. And uh, on our mob package, we're going to right click and uh, make a new class. And we're co going to call it Goomba. All right, and if we need to make it extend entity because it's an entity. Oh, by the way, I finally got my laptop fixed. I'm really happy. Uh, so hopefully there won't be any more stupid background noises. So import entity and uh, add constructor. All right there we go. Just I don't know why it does that. I hate it. Now just uh, type our methods our render method with graphics g parameter and our tick method and in our tick method because our goomba will be moving we need to do x plus equals val x and y plus equals val y and just import graphics for graphics g in our render method there you go and uh, i'm going to show you in gimp oh. you can see that i've made probably the best goomba sprite in the world yeah, it's an animation as well. Because I made an animation, it's and the amount of frames that the Goomba has are the same as the amount of frames our player has. I'm gonna pretty much copy the player's animation system into our Goomba system. If you decide to do an animation, uh, I suggest if you want to make it a bit easier for yourself, make it the amount of frames of the player animation, and make sure underneath each frame that the Goomba is facing the same way the player is facing. Otherwise, it would look kind of weird. So I just suggest that just to make it a bit easier. If you want to do more or less frames, then you know you have to figure that out yourself. Sorry, I can't really do much about that if you're going to do things different to the way I'm doing it. So yeah, anyway, it's a really good Goomba animation. I I'm probably going to put it on the internet for sale. Everyone's going to want to get their hands on it. They're going to hire me as a graphics artist, and uh, I could uh, make a career right there. All right. So because I made a Goomba sort of thing, sprite, sorry, I'm just going to go into our game class and we're going to create an array of sprites like we did for an array of array of uh, player sprites. So I'm going to type public static sprites. We're meant to make these sort of square brackets to tell Java we want an array. And we're going to call it Goomba. And because the amount of frames our Goomba has are the same of the amount of frames our player has, so we're going to copy the for loop where we specify each image in our player array, but we're just going to change everything to Goomba because it's our Goomba array. So change that to Goomba. And for the Y coordinate, change it to 15 because our player Y coordinate is 16 and our Goomba is 1 grid above that, so just change that to 15. And of course, under mushroom, we need to type Goomba is equal to a new sprite and 8, because that's how many frames it has. Now, because our Goomba will pretty much have the same sort of behavior as our mushroom, it'll move left and right and bounce off walls and, you know, have gravity, etc. We're just going to go into our mushroom class, uh, copy all the code in the tech method other than the x plus equals vel x and y plus equals vel y. Yeah, so we'll copy all of that card and paste it into the Goomba card. Okay, so now we're going to go into our player class. 
and under if e dot get id equals id dot mushroom we're going to type else if e dot get id come on is equal to id dot goomba because we haven't made a goomba constant in id we're just going to hover over and create enum constant goomba in id all right and i'll just do that for us Okay, go back into our player class. So now we're going to check if get bounds dot intersects e dot get bounds. So we're checking if our Goomba is colliding with our player. And in our if statement, we're going to put die. But don't worry, we will make our player able to kill our Goomba in this episode as well. Because as I said, the way our Goomba will animate will be the same as the way our player will animate. I'm just going to copy this code and I'm pretty much going to paste it into our Goomba thing, render method, sorry, and go back into our player class. So now we're going to go into our if felx does not equal to zero if statement, we're going to copy the whole thing and paste it into our Goomba class under our if falling statement. Now to test if this all works, we're going to actually go into our, I'm um, just going to open our level.png image. Where is it? There it is. Uh, we're, we're experiencing technical difficulties. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, I'm just going to zoom in, resize it. There we go. Alright, so let me just get to our level. And uh, let's make our Goomba orange. So that will be, what will that be? That'll be, let's make it FFAA00. That's a bit of an orange color, make it, maybe make it a bit darker. Maybe 99. Uh, I'll go more FF77. There we go, that's a good orange color. Okay, and I'm going to put a Goomba next to our mushroom here. So, of course, we need to export our level.png image, replace it with our other, other previous level image, refresh our project folder, and, of course, go into our handler class, do the usual. Let's check if the pixel's RGB value equals to uh, the orange pixel we just made. And, yeah. And green is equal to, I think it was 119, and blue is equal to 0 then. Entity, new, Goomba, x by 64, y by 64, 64, 64, true, id dot Goomba. And before we run it, make sure in our Goomba class that in g dot draw image, we want to change game dot player to game dot Goomba because we want to draw images in the Goomba sprite array. So now let's run our game. Alright, you can see our mushroom is moving and our Goomba is right here. So if we go ahead and let's say touch, touch our Goomba, there you go. As you can see that we die and if we try to move we can't because we're dead. So now we're going to add an option to actually kill our Goomba. But first, in our get bounds left dot intersect t dot get bounds method in our Goomba class, we're going to type facing is equal to 3, so that'll make our Goomba move right and face right, of course. And in our get bounds right, if statement, we're going to type facing is equal to 1, and that'll make our Goomba face left. And we're going to go into our mushroom class. Uh, just copy the private random random is equal to new random thing, line. Then just copy our dir int and our switch or direction if you wonder what dir means. It's short for direction. And before we run our game, in our switch, we're going to type facing is equal to 1 and facing is equal to 3. Or actually facing is equal to 0 and facing is equal to 1. So now let's run our game. And there you go, as you can see our Goomba is moving fine, it's, you know, just moving left and right and it's being animated. Right, so we can go big and we can die.
Now we're going to program the function that kills our Goomba if the player stomps on the top of its head. So, we are going to go into our player class and above our if statement where we check if we're colliding with the Goomba, we're going to type if get bounce bottom dot intersects e dot get bounds top then we're going to type e dot die so this is going to make our entity die in which case our goomba die and in the second if statement we're going to type else if So we're pretty much saying if get bounds bottom dot intersects e dot get bounds top. If that's not true, then it goes to this and if that's not true, then it goes to this if statement. So let me just do this real quick. Alright, so now if we run our game. Okay, so if we try to jump on top of our Goomba. There you go, as you can see we have squished our Goomba and he dies. And if we run our game again, but not squish our Goomba. Alright. There you go, as you can see we die. So I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. If someone you know is interested in learning how to program in Java, I please send in this tutorial. I highly recommend it. So, see you guys soon. Bye.